Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is spending years campaigning for safer vaccines in the United States. Recently, that campaign provoked some savage ridicule from HBO host John Oliver. Watch. These days, very few people will say they are completely anti-vaccine. Instead, like the president, they'll say, I'm not anti-vaccine, but... One example is, hey, I'm not anti-vaccine, but I am pro-safe vaccine. And, and that can often refer to concern over scary-sounding ingredients like thimerosal, a, a mercury-based preservative. For years now, RFK Jr. has led a crusade against it. In fact, just this year, he gave a speech where he said this. For 33 years, I've been working to get mercury out of fish. Nobody has ever called me any fish. <laughs> And because I want mercury out of vaccines, I should not be called anti-vaccine. Okay, well, for a start, why would anyone be ashamed to be called anti-fish? Fish are stupid. And how do I know that? Look at them. Just look at this idiot. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. joins us tonight. The response to that piece that John Oliver did really struck me. I think of you as someone whose bona fides as a Democrat and a liberal are kind of unimpeachable. And yet, they piled on you. Why? Why is raising questions about the safety of vaccines a no-go zone on the left? Well, you know, it's interesting because it, it's not consistent with the traditional liberal posture of skepticism towards large corporate power, and particularly the pharmaceutical industry yes. and, and government agencies and, and CDC has been characterized by at least four federal studies as a cesspool of corruption because of its pervasive um, interactions, entanglements, I would say, with the vaccine industry. CDC, the CDC vaccine branch has really turn, is really a subsidiary of the vaccine industry. It sells $4.1 billion worth of vaccines a year. It spends about $4.6 billion, almost half of its budget, promoting vaccines. And it only spends $20 million testing vaccines. That's good for a tiny handful of the vaccines we have. One of the problems, and you know, I've been meeting recently with the heads of various federal agencies. And one of the, you know, one of the kind of shocking things about vaccines is that there's very little safety testing. If you have a normal drug, let's say Vioxx or Viagra, um, if you want to bring that to market, typically FDA requires you to do double blind placebo studies. So you take 9,000 people, give them the pill, 9,000 people and give them a pill that's identical except it's just sugar. And then you look, you watch typically for around five years and see if there's harm. Yes. Oh, with vaccines, all of those requirements are waived. I don't know what to think of that. I, I have many children. I had them all vaccinated. I'm not against vaccines. But I am for asking sincere questions, and I suspect... Exactly. I, I'm deeply suspicious of people who shout down those questions on the basis of the fact they're unfashionable. So I still don't understand why all of a sudden you're not allowed to ask sincere questions. I don't think you're getting paid for this, are you? No, I'm not. In fact... I'm getting unpaid for this. It's been probably the worst career move that I've ever made. But, and, but you know, this is, I'm, it's deeply concerning to me because if you look at the vaccine schedule, the vaccine schedule was um, expanded dramatically in 1989. In 1987, Congress passed a law giving blanket immunity from liability to vaccine manufacturers. So suddenly vaccines became pay dirt. It was a gold rush to put new vaccines on the schedule. I got three vaccines when I was a kid and I was fully compliant. My children got 69 vaccines. Today's children got 74 vaccines, 74 shots of 16 vaccines. So, and nobody has ever tested all of what all those vaccines do together. And in fact, many of the vaccines have not been tested at all for the illnesses that are associated with them. I don't know what the answer is, but I know what the questions ought to be, and you always have a place in the show to ask them. Any, anyone with sincere but questions. You know, it's not very, that is very kind and courageous of you, because as you know, most television hosts will not let you on to talk about this issue. On the evening news, typically 17 out of 24 advertisements are pharmaceutical advertisements, and most hosts are frightened of that. 
So I am very grateful I, I don't to you think for we your willingness. I'm afraid of honest questions, and I think you're, you're asking them. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Tucker.